yesterday, I think yesterday, uh, or no, on Tuesday in the, the evening, our boy, Nicholas Robert Ricardo, announced to the world that he intended to start streaming again on Rumble. He gave a time and date. He said it would be a relaxed, casual stream talking about law stuff. And not his case. So he said, uh, 11 p.m., come join me. And that one hour before that happened, this post was made. MN Public Record says, Interesting new matter, a public record attached. Would anyone care to ask Nick's most ardent defenders why it was okay for a nine-year-old to test positive for cocaine? And the excerpt that he's referring to, this is a, um, a hearing um, in regards to the custody of his children and the well-being of his kids. Um, one of the, the pieces of evidence uh, submitted to the state as justification for placing his children in foster care was after being placed out of the home, the children were subject to hair follicle drug testing. All of the children, except for his nine-year-old daughter, who she turned nine on the day that uh, he was arrested, tested negative. She tested positive for cocaine at a level, level of 5,000 over 500. I have done an inordinate amount of research into what this means, and I will now explain it to you. They're saying that her hair contained uh, 5,000 pic picograms, or, uh, yeah, picograms, I'm pretty sure, or 500 micro micrograms of cocaine-related metabolites per 500 micrograms of, or no, milligrams, uh, milligrams, sorry, it's 5,000 picograms, five th or 500 micrograms over 500 milligrams of hair follicle. So what they do when they do this test is they take the hair and they cut off about five centimeters of it. Um, and this, the human hair usually grows at about one centimeter per month. So that's how you can do a date range. They take that specific length of hair and they test it using a gas chromiopathy where they take the hair and after they clean it and stuff, they uh, first wash the hair and they heat it up so that everything inside of it boils and becomes a gas. And then they shine a light through it and they measure what obstructs the light. Different chemicals have different obstructions of the light, and they can detect what chemicals are in the gas composition uh, based off of how the light is obstructed. So what they estimate, um, and when I say estimate, I mean with very clear precision, is that there is 5,000 picograms of cocaine metabolites per 500 grams of hair that was cleaned uh, and then boiled at extremely high temperatures to create a gas cloud uh, for, uh, for, for color testing. This means uh, that there is no, co there was a speculative theory that maybe she just got dusted in cocaine. She happened to be washing dishes or something and the cucks uh, snack tray was washed and then she got a little pff, cocaine in her hair. That's not how it works. Uh, they test for two different kinds of cocaine metabolites. They have impossible to read names, um, <laughs> so I will not. I will not try. Just know that there's two. One of them is something that uh, exists exists only basically any time you have cocaine. Cocaine will naturally what's called hydrolyze. It will come into contact with water or air or um, air moisture and create a uh, what's called a metabolite, but it's, it's just a na natural reaction to cocaine. And this means that basically anything that comes into contact with cocaine uh, is going to be contaminated with this metabolite that they test for in the, the, uh, the, gas, the gas test, the hair follicle test. The other one is not created by hydrolyzing. It is created by your biological reaction to cocaine and is, not, is very indicative that you ingested cocaine. We do not have the test, so we cannot determine uh, what metabolites were detected. However, I want to say this, um, that if, number one, the idea that it was simply a lab mix-up is extremely unlikely, If because this is one of their copes. Maybe it was just a mistake at the lab. 
if a nine-year-old child tests positive for cocaine, they're not going to say, oh, that's normal. Let's take her away from her parents. It's going to be, that's abnormal. Let's run it again. The test only costs $100. Let's be sure. Um, so I wholly reject that they would not simply do another test if there was an anomalous positive, especially if the other kids aren't coming up positive too. Second, if the test showed one metabolite but not the other, then that would be a pretty good indication that the test was faulty. Because if you have two metabolites that exist when cocaine is ingested and metabolized in the body, and only one of them exists outside, can exist outside the body, and you only find that one, that would probably be an indication of a false positive. But number th three, um, the rates of false positives are extremely low. The reason why they only take five centimeters of hair is that the more hair you add, the uh, the uh, more diluted the sample is. If you take 10 centimeters of hair and the child only did cocaine one time, then the mass of hair might be so great that it would fall under the cutoff. So really the issue is that the, the equipment is not sensitive enough to detect um, for certain uh, that, that there, there is cocaine. So if you get a positive, there's less than a 1% chance, according to the, the statistics, that you're going to have a false positive. Um, you're much more likely to get a false negative with the, the hair samples. And from the statistics that I saw, cocaine is actually the best drug to detect with this hair follicle sampling. Um, it, it was less effective with other things, but of the people who self-reported taking cocaine, 100% of them came up positive. So it's very unlikely to, um, to miss... If, if it's in your body. It's a, it's a very accurate test. So Riketa is really fighting against an established scientific mechanism for testing the presence of cocaine in the hair, which exists through metabolizing. If both of those metabolites are there, and I can't say that for certain because I don't have the test, but chances are it is <laughs> based, off, based off of this, then he's fucked. And and I think that's kind of beside the point because his whole thing has been that he and his wife and April and Aaron responsibly enjoyed and partook in cocaine and the state's charges against them being reckless or endangering their children in any way are, are wrong. But yet the best case possible scenario for, um, for his defense is that she simply was coated in cocaine. <laughs> that's that's the best possible outcome. She the nine year old, which happens to be, by the way, her his favorite daughter, uh, his favorite child. He's talked at length about how she's the one who has violent tendencies. She also has narcolepsy and ADHD. I'm pretty sure he said. But despite that, and despite how difficult she is, she, uh, he says that she reminds him the most of himself, and she's his his favorite. He's outright said this. So it's very peculiar that she, of all the children that exist in the Rakeda household, just so happens to be the one that also tests positive for cocaine. It sounds like there is something else happening. Can I say that for sure? No. Is he innocent until proven guilty? Yes. Can the government make mistakes? Absolutely. Um, but he has done everything possible to deprive himself of the benefit of the doubt that I would want to give him just on the aspiration that um, this is not reality, that there is no child endangerment and that a nine-year-old hasn't been doing cocaine in his household. But, you know, it sounds absurd, but it's, it's, it happens a lot. Um, children getting exposed to cocaine is not uncommon, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, it, it, it happens enough that there are studies about it where they will go into, like, poor areas and just start cutting kids' hairs as a... As a matter of precaution and find that children have uh, over time been exposed to cocaine. So it's not a, like, unless it is an app, just a complete fuck up where they did the test one time and it came up as a false positive because they fucked up the samples, which is the only way that that false positive is happening. Um, it's still really bad for Akeda. Uh When this got dropped, uh, I ended up moving all the discussion about this out and, uh, and there was speculation if it's real or not, because the order is very sloppy. 
um, which is both a detriment to it because it's unprofessional, but it's also a positive to it because when these orders are done, they usually call the judge up at an odd hour. Things are explained kind of hastily, and the judge kind of takes a template and edits, edits it so that it can be actioned immediately that evening. Um, so it being kind of sloppy and weird and uh, things spelled wrong and stuff, that is more of a, a credit to its authenticity. Um, when I asked a Minnesota attorney to look at it and tell me if he thinks it's accurate, um, he gave it about a 60% being accurate, which I think was a fair approximation if you're being conservative. Um, then I looked at certain met metadata, which I'm not going to disclose, and I was 90% sure that this is a real document. And then right before the stream was supposed to happen, Rakeda messaged me and started saying, uh, like debating the information inside the document, not the authentic authenticity of the document itself, saying um, the information about hydrolyzing I got from him because that's his defense. Uh, so I said, I'm 100% sure <laughs> at this point in time that this is an authentic document because when Rakeda addresses it, he's addressing it as the document is real, but the facts inside of it are false allegations from the state. So that's definitely what happened. Um, and whoever dropped this, dropped this in such a way to cause him a problem because right before the stream, he was hoping to make this like a normal uh, Rakeda law, law tubing thing. Uh, but then, of course, the news that broke right before he went live was that his child tested positive for cocaine, which caused Robert Barnes to freak out and say, look, the Kiwi Farms are obsessing over his children again, which is something I really don't appreciate. And I, I might as well explain, um, when Patrick Tomlinson sued 50 John Doe's in Michigan, um, one of the, the Kiwi Farms got hit with a subpoena from the, the court. And uh, I challenged this, and I asked Ricada, you know a Michigan attorney, and he referred me to Robert Barnes. Um, Barnes represented me. Uh, he charged $5,000 to make an appearance, and in the appearance, the judge effectively asked him why he even bothered, because um, it, the information was already gathered. But I had, I had lawyered up because I didn't want him to get um, information he didn't need for the purposes of his civil litigation. Um, but it was $5,000... <laughs> Basically, just to have Robert Barnes show up over Zoom, I'm pretty sure, and uh, make an appearance for us, uh, which he, which is the the full extent of our um, our association. But the problem is, is that Robert Barnes has represented Local LLC, which is the parent company that owns the Kiwi Farms that I am the sole member of. And when he goes out onto live stream and he says that uh, the Kiwi Farms is uh, after someone's children is wanting body cam footage to prey on children, I I kind of detest that, and I'm considering filing an ethics complaint against him because it, it's very reasonable for a person to hear my attorney say that the Kiwi Farms is after children and infer that he has some kind of protected knowledge regarding the Kiwi Farms and its activities when he does not, and he's just being a dickhead to protect Ricada. Um, he should not be speaking about a client that way, and he should not be Im implying the things that he is about a former client. Um, I'm extremely upset about it uh, because, you know, you have random dickheads who say dumb shit all the fucking time. Um, Robert Barnes is the first random dickhead saying dumb shit about us that happened to be our attorney at one point in time. And it is, it's getting very close to being like a genuine ethics violation. And I'm considering that it, it might be worth it. Because not only has he said this about the Kiwi Farms, he implied in the same breath that Legal Mindset um, is a sex tourist. And Legal Mindset's a member of the board as well. Uh, he sits, in, uh, I think, in, in Florida's Bar Association. So, like, unprofessional conduct is an uh, understatement. Barnes is off the fucking deep end. I don't know what he's trying to do. Um, but he is damaging his professional reputation by speaking ill of former clients and implying things about them that would uh, insinuate that he has some kind of knowledge as a in, in his former acting capacity as our attorney, uh, which he does not have. Uh, and I really, really don't fucking appreciate it. So it's a, it's a frustrating situation because it's like, I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm not ha and by the way that Barnes implied that this the the real issue here is that this document got leaked. This document is public. It is public. Um it exists in the in the docker. It has an ID that you can pull up searching for it. Uh you're not supposed to be make copies of it. But if that's the case and if that's a crime in the state of Minnesota, 
someone went out of their way to go to a courthouse to commit a crime because they are so upset by what they apparently knew about uh, to warrant it, to warrant that risk. And that never, like, when it comes to, like, legal mind, or um, Robert Barnes and all these people who are, like, playing defense, and even with Ricada, like, the way he defends himself, it's like, your children are in foster care. They're out of your custody. You've lost access to them, and you've stopped cooperating with Child Protective Services. They asked him, by the way, to submit to drug testing because the case of the, um, of the weapons possession uh, is a different case than the Child Protective Services case. So the Child Protective Services said, okay, you posted bail for $10,000, actually $100,000, but you paid $10,000 um, so that you don't have to do drug tests. But uh, this is a completely different legal matter. And if you want access to your children, you will submit to a drug test so that we know that they're in a safer environment than they were when we took them. Riketa and Kayla say, no, we're not going to do that. So right now, Riketa and his wife and his hot wife, April, they're still together, are living in an empty house, a big empty house that used to be full of children running around, is now just Baldo and the, the, um, the doped-up wife and the low-IQ retard 30-year-old April M. Holt just chilling out, no kids around, and they're perfectly fine with this. And their current um, concerns are getting back on YouTube and live streaming, and that's it. And it's just baffling. It's like the and and by the way, he messaged me on Signal ten minutes before he went live, so he still reads the Kiwi Farms. And one of the things that he said in his message to me is that he was thankful that I had locked the forum thread about him. But that's uh, which is also what um ran throwback to the one I was talking about Ranbot. That's what Ranbot was talking about in his hole. Um, I had locked the main thread so that I could direct people's discussion about this to its own thread because I knew it would blow up and it would uh, make the main thread hard to read for some people. So he took that as me sweeping up for him and personally thanked me for it. So that was his concern. Not that his child had been taken away from him and tested positive for cocaine, um, but that his Kiwi Farms thread had been locked, even though it wasn't. It was just I was directing people who use the other thread by locking the main one. Um, it's, it's fucking dire. And Robert Barnes has the fucking gall to complain that people are talking about it. Like, yeah, of course they're talking about it. Retard. <laughs> Do you think that if any of these documents leaked out about people that Ricada didn't like, that, like, uh, Monica, the fucking, um, the Vic Mignogna people, that if documents came out showing that their kids tested positive for cocaine, that Ricada wouldn't make fun of that on YouTube to tens of thousands of viewers? No, he would have, for sure. He, and he would have done a much more performative uh, talking down to than I would have. You know how he gets when he wants to, to make Super Chat money? He gets all huff and puff. He's like, how dare you? How dare you? You should be ashamed of yourself. Like getting really, really hyped up, getting into the microphone and yelling and doing like the whole spiel about it. That's just, that's what he would have done. Like everybody fucking knows it. I don't know why we're pretending that he, that wasn't his career for multiple years. That wasn't the most successful period of his entire life was taking other people's drama and talking about it. Um, so there you go. That's the Ricada update. Um, his middle daughter tested positive for cocaine. He denies that she ingested cocaine. He says that merely she was exposed to a metabolite that hydrolyzes in the air and that basically all cocaine substance, uh, cocaine, uh, contaminates with. However, as I mentioned, hair is washed before it's put into the uh, the gas chamber. <laughs> Not that one, the other one. Uh, so the claim that it's contaminated by outside cocaine sources doesn't seem plausible. The gas that they test for is inside the hair, and they're specifically trying to, to filter out false positives like that. So, yeah, it is what it is. It's um, It's sad. Uh, his reactions to stuff are increasingly depressing. The fact that anyone is still like, "Come on, guys, we have to, we have to be wary of the state here," is like, like. Sh I'll I'll say this: it is possible, I think, to remind people of your defense. But the way he's done it has failed to convince anyone that he is a victim. Um, 
he's made several public statements. He's take he's very he's like flippant. He's I, I like to use that word. That's the other word that I like. Flippant. He talks to people about his children being taken away and the fact that there's a grand government conspiracy surrounding him um, flippantly. And it's it's very embarrassing. And it's like I don't know any he, he's now positing himself as like this free speech martyr. He told too many truths about the law and the government. And now the foot of government has coming down on him. And anyone who doesn't take his side and doesn't believe him when he says he didn't do nothing and he a good boy, uh, they're the bootlickers. Like, come the fuck on. It's so insulting. It, it would be more insulting to people, I think, if there weren't at least a couple retards um, trying to <laughs> try, like trying to defend him still. It, it works, apparently. Um, so someone uh, asked me about the, um, let me see if I can find this real quick. Someone asked me real quick, like, did he like message you right before the stream? Cause there was a theory that when the, the documents dropped and he, um, was delaying the stream that he was having like a, a downfall moment and like the Baldo bunker, um, like, like yelling at people and it kind of fit a little bit too perfectly. Let me see if I can find the post that I need real quick. Oh, here. Here it is. I'm going to try to speak German again. You ready? Mit dem Angriff knows wer das alles in Ordnung kommen. And then, of course, the, the, the Baldo lickers around him would come and say, Mein, mein Anwalt Papst. Which means Law Pope. In case you're wondering, it's a very funny pun, chat. It's a very funny pun. <laughs> no, the first sentence is um, in, in the original text it says Steiner's counteroffensive will will bring it under control and it's like once Noel locks the thread once Noel locks the thread everything will be under control he just locked it so it's all good my law pope the thread was merely redirected to a different thread because it would be too many posts in the main thread starts shaking takes off his glasses starts slamming on the table and says that was an order I gave him a shower text. I told him what I expected of him. Bad. Thanks for watching this clip. This is Willow. Remember to like and subscribe.